लतफान जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम खदीजा वालेकुम सलाम कैसी हो ठीक हो जी अस्सलाम चले जी सो इन आज थोड़ा सा काफी थियोरेटिकल काम है लेकिन अगेन चीजें थोड़ी समझने वाली हैं so inshallah just bear with me okay yes, a lot of stuff to write today but again all of this is very important filled up with past papers actually is ke main sabse pehle to papers kholta hu biodiversity topic अस्सलाम वालेकुम फरियान Hello ji so let's begin all right quickly i'm going to give you a very a quick birds eye view of where we left last week okay so basically uh we were doing taxonomy and by the way uh if you missed out on something for this topic of biologic uh, biodiversity so that's not an issue because ye jo iska portion hai classification ka this is totally something uh, separate from what we have done so far in this topic so you don't need to worry about about all of that so we started off with the idea of classification or many context set kiya tha ki you know we've been talking about measuring the biodiversity <clears throat> of different animals and different living organisms in this particular topic so uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, taking sample then you know jaake uh, animals ko dekhna plants ko dekhna so it's it's a good idea that you have all of them classified so that that was the entire reason why this branch of biology came about which is taxonomy which is a way of uh, naturally classi- classifying organisms based on their evolutionary relationships theek hai aur maine aapko bataya tha ki jo ek hierarchy hai if you like the bigger if you start from the top and we go to the bottom then the this classification goes like the following domain kingdom phylum class order family genus and species okay aur maine aapko kaha tha ki main aapko bataunga ki there is a way in which you can actually remember all of this so let me quick quickly uh, tell you that aur isko main yahi pe likh deta hu taki aapke paas notes mein ye sara kuch ek hi jagah pe ho so basically a uh, kingdom domain kingdom phylum class order family genus species okay so you can remember this with the following a uh, nemonic let me write that down with a different color let's say orange acha ji so hum kingdom se shuru kar rahe hain domain aap yaad rakh lijiyega so kings play chess on fancy gold squares okay so K is a kingdom, P is a phylum, C is a class, F is a family. Uh, I, oh, sorry. O is a order. Hai, F is a family. Hai, G is a genus. Hai, and from S you have um, species. Okay. So this is a way in which you can basically remember all of this stuff that seems impossible to remember. Of course, domain being on top of the uh, the the cap, if you like, it's the bigger number. ठीक है एंड देन आई सेड दैट वी विल बी टॉक द द मेन क्लासिफिकेशन इज ऑफ डोमेन्स सो द डोमेन्स इनिशियली आर डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री क्लासेस बैक्टीरिया आर्किया एंड यूकेरिया और मैंने आपको बताया था इनिशियली द क्लासिफिकेशन एक्चुअली बिगन विद दीस टू बैक्टीरिया एंड यूकेरिया व्हिच इज द यूकेरियोट्स लेकिन सम ऑफ द बैक्टीरियाज दे शोड स्लाइटली डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शनल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड देयरफॉर this third division came into place which is archaea 
ठीक है एंड इन आर लास्ट लास्ट वी एंडेड ऑफ विद सीइंग द मेन डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन आरकेए एंड बैक्टीरिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर मेम्ब्रेन लिपिड्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर राइबोसोमल आरएनए एंड ऑफ कोर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर सेल वॉल कंपोजिशन इन पॉइंट्स को डिटेल में मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया था ऑफ कोर्स आई वोंट बी गोइंग इनटू दिस डिटेल सो इंशाल्लाह ऑल व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू नाउ गो इनटू इंडिविजुअल बिट्स एंड पीसेस इन डिटेल्स uh the reason why i want to go in this detail is the yes you will find all of this in the textbook but uh if i show you some of the if skim through some of the past papers for example uh viruses are not included in three domain classification system as they have different features describe the features of virus eight marks so uh matlab i mean ye straight forward questions aate hain with information so it's, it's a good idea that we understand and make sense और मैं आपको उतनी इन्फॉर्मेशन दे दूं जितनी इन्फॉर्मेशन मार्क्स के हिसाब से आपको चाहिए सो यू डोंट हैव टू स्क्रैम स्क्रैम्बल योर हेड स्क्रैचिंग इट थ्रू ऑल ऑफ योर डिफरेंट टेक्स्ट बुक्स गाइड बुक्स एंड ऑल व्हाट नॉट द केसेस बिकॉज़ अगेन दिस इज दिस इज ए ऑल ऑफ दिस इज क्लासिकल ए ओ वन द थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ठीक है जी सो आर्किया जस्ट टू क्विकली रीकैप दे वर बैक्टीरियाज व्हिच एक्चुअली लिव्ड इन वेरी हार्श कंडीशंस ओके their optimum temperatures uh, were quite a lot more than usual bacteria and they had some other features so again domain be domain being the very big picture uh, and, and then stemming from bacteria is the archaea and then of course you have the eukarya aur fir maine aapko bataya tha ki eukaryotes of course have further uh, four divisions that again we're going to talk about and then viruses are not included in all of this and inshallah we will discuss the reason why that's the case so now what we are going to begin with today is basically we are going to talk about all of these three uh, classifications of domains bacteria archaea and eukarya in slight detail so i'm going to uh, i'm not going to literally start making bullet points and just go all the way down i am going to try to make it as visual and as diagrammatic as i can so that <clears throat> it's easier for us to remember okay so the first thing that i am going to talk about is basically एक सेकंड जी ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू कंपेयर द बैक यूकेरियोट्स प्रोकेरियोट्स एंड द आर्किया और उसके लिए मैंने आपके लिए एक टेबल लिया हुआ है एंड दैट टेबल इज अ वेरी गुड टेबल एंड इट विल आल्सो हेल्प यू टू इट विल आल्सो गिव यू अ वे बेसिकली टू रिमेंबर ऑल ऑफ द स्टफ दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ओके सो uh features of three domains yeah there you go this is from a mark scheme well not exactly from the mark scheme lekin ye aapki cambridge ki examiner ki ek workbook ka table hai and it's a wonderful table so again um we can make bullet points in terms of cell structure number 2 nucleus number 3 dna number 4 dna with histones number 5 talking about their plasmids number 6 ribosomes number 7 about their cell wall number 8 about their cell division and number 9 about their organization so it's in terms of the following nine features that you need to know the differences between all of these three uh classifications of domains sabse pehle baat karte hain let's talk about the cell structure so in terms of cell structure of course we know bacteria they are prokaryotic in nature and you know this already back from as Uh, when i say that there are no uh, they they are prokaryotic that means that they are literally no membrane bound organelles okay and then uh, archaea ka cell structure bhi prokaryotic jaisa hai aur uh, uski picture agar main aapko dikhaun to aap hi ki textbook se one of the yeah acha chale i will show you the pictures in the end I, i by the way i did give you a picture of archaea here so this is a, an her hydrothermal vent which basically is a hub for all of these archaea that you can't see of course because there's at cellular level lekin why am i showing you this picture because ye jo aapko black smoke nazar aa raha hai this is showing that this is uh, this is because of high reactions happening at high temperatures giving off smoke so clearly we can see that these bacteria are surviving these harsh conditions and then of course eukaryotes have a eukaryotic cell structure prokaryotes or eukaryotes ki jo cell comparison tha if you remember that was you did that back in the as with all of those differences now for bacteria we don't have a no we say that it does not have a no true nucleus okay and this is something that you need to understand and it is expected of you to be able to explain in detail what do you mean by when you say that there's no true nucleus dekhiye 
uh, if I were to draw a bacterial cell, all of you know that it has a flagella and all of that cell wall, slime capsule. I'm not drawing that detail, but you know that there is DNA uh, lying there in the cytoplasm. Like in despite of the fact that there is DNA, we don't say that it's a nucleus. Can anybody tell me why uh, don't we call this thing as a nucleus? I mean, DNA is right there uh, in the cytoplasm. Yes, anybody, come on. Be confident and tell me why is bacteria, why do we say it does not have a true nucleus? I mean, what does it take to be called as a nucleus? Come on, girls. Khadija, aap hi bata dein. Sir, separate nahi hai, matlab nuclear envelope, uh, cytoplasm ka part bana raha hai, is tarah. Oh, Rabia, if you don't mind. Okay, I think you do. Faryal, <laughs> mazaak karo. Anji, Faryal, come on, tell me. Come on, but this is this is this is honestly uh bot but question. Chale, koi baat nahi. Main bata deta, as usual. So you know uh, anything is qualified to be called as a nucleus. Yes, Khatija, as you rightly said, nuclear envelope hona chahiye. If the nuclear content is surrounded by the nuclear envelope, it's only then when we say that it has a nucleus. So despite of the fact that there is DNA in the bacteria. It does not necessitate that we nucleus. Okay? And of course, same goes for archaea, since it's following the suit of bacteria with slight differences. And of course, eukaryotic, they do have a nucleus. Okay. Uh, uske baad, uh, the next thing that we need to talk about is the DNA. Now, this is very important. Uh, DNA wala third or fourth point, we will see it together. And with that, I will tell you something as such, they haven't uh, gone in the details of. And that is... <clears throat> DNA is circular for bacteria and for archaea, but it is linear for, um, for eukarya. Achha, there's also a word that we use for bacterial DNA, and we say that it has naked DNA. Okay, linear naked DNA nahi hota. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, archaea ke saath naked nahi likhna. It's only bacteria that also has naked DNA. Now, I want you to understand and tell me what's the difference between a circular DNA and a linear DNA? Anybody? Manage upper bacteria may draw here, something like this. That's a circular DNA. Okay. Why am I calling it as a circular DNA? Well, because it's a circle, it's a loop of DNA. I mean, it's starting from one side and then it's 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 making a loop. It's, it's not open from any of the sides, unlike the following model, which is typically known as the, the helical model. Yes, could double helix be get there. You call this thing as the double helix. And the reason why we don't call a double helix as circular is because it's and end ke saath mil nahi it's exposed. Okay, so it's linear, it's not folded and it's, it's not touching and it's not making a circle. Okay, so that's why we say that this is linear DNA. Now, the fact that the bacterial cell does not have histones. Achaji, now, what are histones? Well, uh, the thread-like structure, which is known as chromosome, is actually literally wound around these small circular protein molecules. Okay, and okay, the, the thread-like structure is not just, uh, uh, you know, wrapping and coiling around itself, but it's actually coiling around these, these circles that I've drawn, which are representative of histone proteins. Histone proteins ki bahut zyada structural detail mein, you don't need to know all of that. But of course, you need to know that there is this protein thingy, the circular, the protein balls, if you like, uh, present within the structure of DNA. Now, if there is histone protein with the chromosome, uh, then, sorry, if there isn't histone protein with DNA, then we call it as naked DNA. Naked ka matlab hota hai, without histones. Okay, so that's why bacterial DNA are known as naked DNA, while archaea 
while it is circular, but it does have histone proteins. Okay, so you can see there is a tick here. And of course, eukarya mein to histones hoti hai. That's not a point that we have to disagree on. Okay. All right. And then in terms of plasmids, uh, there are many, aapko pata hai ki bacterial cell mein, apart from this DNA, they, they have these circular loops, which are also actually DNA. And inshallah, the very first topic that we're going to see in our next and the last topic, it is going to talk about these plasmids quite in detail. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you have these plasmids, um, which are present in many, uh, in bacteria, archaea mein thode hote hai, and then uh, eukarya mein, uh, usually they are not, but they are only, for example, present in the single cells of fungus, which are known as the yeast cells. And then, of course, a very important point: jitna usko mein reiterate karo, utna kam hai ribosomes. Bacterial cells have 70s. Eukarya, sorry, archaea have 70s, and eukarya have both 80s and 70s. How is that the case? If that's an animal cell. And if that's a mitochondria that I've drawn, okay, uh, the in the cytoplasm you will find ATS ribosomes, okay. Lakin, apart from that, the mitochondria and in case of uh, and a plant cell, the chloroplast, both of them will have 70s within the organelle. So a eukaryotic cell by default will have both ATS and 70s. But you said they only suffice their answers with ATS, and I forget to mention about. 70s. While we need to know that 70s eukaryotic cell is composed both of uh, 70s and 80s ribosomes. Okay. Okay. Uske baad, the next thing is, of course, uh, none other than the cell wall. The composition of cell wall bacteria we know is uh, peptidoglycan. Okay. Uh, archaea it does not have peptidoglycan in the cell wall. Neither does the eukaryotic cells. Well, animal cells ke paas to hai nahi, uh, cell wall, but the, for the plant cells that do have, we know that it's made up of cellulose. So let me write that down here. Plant cells, their cell wall is made up of cellulose. Okay. Uh, or jo fungus hai, eukarya mein, uski jo cell wall hai, wo usually is made up of chitin, chitin, whatever you want to call it. Okay. It's made up of cellulose. Okay. And then in terms of method of division, uh, the uh, bacteria divide by binary fission, which is literally multiplication, two into four, four into 16, 16 into 64, something like this, it's a cascade. Same goes for archaea. And then of course, uh, for eukaryotes, that's for plants, animals, and fungi, it, they go with mitosis as a method of their cell division. Or finally, uh, ninth point in terms of organization, as in uh, bacteria is single cell, okay? Single cell, but they usually exist as a group of cells. Okay, you, you won't call those group as tissues of bacteria. No, they are uh, groups of bacteria that just are there together. And then, of course, for archaea, you also have single cell or change or group of cells. Uncom filaments get there. We don't call them as tissues. And then, of course, we know that for um, this particular scenario, uh, for the third domain, which is the eukarya, we also have unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular ki classical example, fungus may yeast hai, animal cells may paramecium hai, and so on and so forth. There are many examples. So basically, um, why I, am I giving you all of this information in the form of table? Because number one, the most important thing is it will be very easy for you to remember. I get exam mein wo aapko pooch leta hai, ke aap, uh, you have to compare the features because usually, there has hardly been a case where, yes, there have been instances where he has asked you to list or describe the features of uh, individuals of these. So why does prokaryote does not have to, when did I say this? Prokaryotes do, this is table of prokaryotes, bacteria are prokaryotes. The bacterial cells, they are prokaryotes, uh, prokaryotes, and they do have uh, peptidoglycan, that's what I said, okay? Achha. So basically, organization. Now, I quickly want to go to a pass paper question. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
for all of these individual uh, exam uh, domains including the prokaryotes the eukaryotes and the and i hope i'm not missing anything yes i talked about majority of but they all of the points challenge so now let's move on let me go back to that bigger picture so what we've done is we've seen in detail uh, the differences between bacteria archaea and eukarya now what i'm going to do is I am going to yeah. They can ab you carry a ke under now there is classification within the you area. You have the kingdom, you have kingdoms, and you have kingdom animalia, you have kingdom planty, you have kingdom fungi, and you have kingdom protoctista. Now uh, we need to go into details. You will find questions that usually ask um, to give comparisons for all of these uh, uh, kingdoms. Usually kingdoms ke upar zara zada questions aate hain. in comparison to the others so inshallah we will i will show try and show you pictures of your own textbook i won't go a lot here and there so let's just begin with the very first uh maine yahan pe protoctista ko to likha hua tha i think i numbered protoctista as number 4 but let me just start off with protoctista since that's something new for you okay so uh we are now going into details of eukarya ठीक है और वी नो दैट यू कैरियर हैज द फॉलोइंग नंबर वन इट हैज प्रोटोक्टिस्टर सो बेसिकली इट हैज किंगडम प्रोटोक्टिस्टर ठीक है इट हैज किंगडम एनिमेलिया एंड देन इट हैज Number three, kingdom planty. This is of course plants. And number four, kingdom fungi. Because you so let's start off with the protoctista. Okay, I'm, I will try to squeeze in all of these points here, so that again it, it's easier for you to remember. Let me use a different ink. Purple use कर लेते हैं जी चलें जी so let's begin talking about the lovely Protoctista. Protoctista uh, इनको अक्सर uh, dustbin kingdom भी कह देते हैं uh, I mean of course uh, that's not a key word I'm just uh, writing this just so that you can remember and make sense dustbin kingdom इसको इसलिए कहा because जिस जिस क्लासिफिकेशन में कोई फिट नहीं हो रहा था उसको उठा के दे पुट देम इनटू किंगडम प्रोटोक्टिस्टा ओके सो देयर फॉर यू विल फाइंड डाइवर्स फीचर्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोटोक्टिस्टा सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज ऑल ऑफ देम आर यूकेरियोट्स ठीक है ऑफ कोर्स वी नीड डोंट नीड टू गो इनटू डिटेल्स ऑफ व्हाट यूकेरियोट मींस यानी कि इट बेसिकली इट फीचर्स all of the all of the features that eukaryotes have okay are kafi diverse there is a, a lot of diversity a great diversity in terms of the following aspects they are diverse in terms of their uh, structure for example yahan pe dekho like yeah their structure they are also diverse in terms of their uh, life cycle their feeding life cycle their feeding fir isi tarah they are diverse when it comes to their um uh, their locomotion for example so again they show great diversity and again one of the reason for this great diversity as i said isko dustbin kingdom kaha gaya tha because jahan jahan pe baki teeno mein koi fit nahi ho raha tha they were given this particular uh, classification okay and then uh, they can exist as single celled organisms Can exist as single 
cell organism. Of course, I don't need to mention what this is. Single cell organisms or group of similar cells. Similar cells. Uh, acha. There is a group of protoctista that are known as protozoans. Protozoans. And it's a tasweed in your textbook. I'll show you it, inshallah. It's on page number. Yeah, it's on page number. Let me, let me give you that picture just in a minute. So protozoans and their classical and, and the protozoans ko hai, um, Okay, their basically uh, features are nearer to animal cells. Nearer to animal cells. Or how do I say that they're nearer to animal cells? Because of the fact that they don't have cell walls. Because no cell wall. Again, as I said, the reason I'm doing this one first is because it's a very diverse features in uh, dustbin kingdom because fit fit And then again, you have a class of uh, protoctista, which are known as algae. I'm sure you've heard of the word uh, blue green algae and alga. Uh, they are nearer to plant cells. And when I say this, of course, the reason is because they have cellulose cell walls and they also have chloroplasts so these are some points uh, more or less the points that you need to know about protoctista uh, that will basically give you an idea aapki book mein ek picture hai wo main that's a uh, typical a protoctista, how it would look like. So let me put this picture here. Okay. Again, and this is a single-celled uh, protoctista that you can see. This picture is from your own textbook. If you want to go into further detail, let me stretch it bigger and show it to you. Then I will squeeze it so you can see it. It's saying that uh, uh, covered in many cilia, which is used for movement and feeding, although unicellular bit has considered a specialization of the region within the body. Look at the cell, uh, ciliated epithelium, bhi hai, animal valley features, bhi hai, or shite cell wall. Yeah, okay, it's a mixture basically. Okay, so that is what a proto is called. This picture is a little wrong because I will give you notes. Bhejo, fir uski disorientation. Ho jayi, so this is Kingdom Protoctista. Okay. okay. Now, the next kingdom that we are going to talk about is, of course, none other than the kingdom Animalia. Or kingdom Animalia, here in our textbook, we have just touched it and left it. But you will see the MD card that you will be ready. And when they will open FSE books, they will fall in love with topic number 10. I'm sure uh, falling in love in another sense. Topic 9 is classification of plants. The Fazul Tareen topic on the face of this earth. And then uh, animals ki classification phir bhi mazi lagti hai, lekin parts ki nah, it brings, brings me so bad memories, but don't ask. So tough luck, oh, sorry, good luck, I mean, I, for the people who are, inshallah, looking forward to their MDS. Achha ji, main mazak nahi kar raha, main aapko honestly bata raha hon. So that's not a joke. Well, if you want to take it as a sarcasm, then do it. Animal, achha ji, kingdom animalia jo hai, they are multicellular. Eukaryotes. Of course, it's obviously understood. You know what multicellular means, and you know clearly what uh, eukaryotes they mean. Then, animal cells. We know they are able to. they have this feature, a feature of specialized cells. For example, you have RBCs, you have white blood cells, and you name it. I mean, so many specialized types uh, which of course uh, animals may levels of organization jo hai, wo kafi achha, which basically means you're going from cells tissues organs and organ system okay and then uh, in kingdom animalia uh, this uh, by the way all of these points after the first points are basically talking at cellular level okay Double arrows to show that I'm talking about animalia at cellular level. 
Okay, and then again, they, uh, they have small temporary vacuoles. They have small temporary vacuoles, and then they have no cell walls, no cell walls, and they have, sometimes they have cilia, sometimes. Easy. So, and then in terms of uh, their feeding, they are heterotrophs. Okay. Heterotrophs ka kya matlab hai? Anybody? Heterotrophic nutrition or dekhi ek hai autotrophic nutrition plants ki which means they make their own food. Heterotrophic basically means that they uh, have a wide range of feeding mechanisms. They don't necessarily make their uh, own mode of nutri uh, own food. Achha, phir uske baad we know that they have their specialized nervous system nervous system hai, or uh, they have their own endocrine and chemical system. Endocrine basically has to do with hormones. They have their own endocrine system. Okay. So these are some points uh, that basically we need to know about kingdom animalia and kingdom protocosta. So uh, 32 minutes ho into our lesson. Uh, time we just to the car here, 10 minutes left. Let's take a one minute break. Uh, I'm leaving the meeting. Please rejoin. <laughs>